All right, I think we're live, guys. Woo <laughs> Yay. Cool. Um, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're super excited to talk about um, improving and removing your content. Uh, so I figured we could just kick things off and kind of get to know everyone a bit, some of our experts um, with some fun facts. Um, so let's start with Julia. Julia's fun fact is pretty fun. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I picked two ahead of time. And I'm like, which one should I drop? One's like lighter and one's more crazy. <laughs> so should I we go for the, crazy or light? I picked which the one? crazy one. Yeah, I, I vote crazy. Okay. <laughs> uh, so well, Julia is actually working on a new book uh, yes. that's a complete deviation from her, her normal genre. Um, it's a narrative nonfiction memoir, which she's talking about how she escaped a cult uh, that she grew up in. Which definitely signed me up to read that. <laughs> You're signed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she also plays the harp and is really talented all around. So Thanks. she's basically my hero. <laughs> Aww, you're sweet. Uh, so also, Jeremy, uh, passing things over to you here, is a Marine Corps vet, which is amazing. Um, he's also finishing his second book, which is super exciting. And um, this book is going to be about effectively marketing your business during a recession. So sign me up for that too. Absolutely. I'm going to have a good book list after this <laughs> webinar. <laughs> uh, so Danny is all around fantastic, obviously. His writing, his editing skills, um, how he's grown Search Engine Journal, which we're going to dive into a bit more today. But um, something that you didn't know about Danny, because you definitely knew all of that, is that he is a Christmas movie addict. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite? What are some of your favorites, Danny? Oh, just anything Hallmark. Uh, I think they're kind of geniuses with what they're doing around around Christmas now. It's almost like a, the perfect example of content marketing to me, because, you know, they've really owned Christmas now, you know, and everything they do with their, they have this whole big Christmas countdown to Christmas thing. You know, they're owning it. They're like putting out 40 new movies a year. They're making millions. It's just amazing. Like we can learn so much just from them. Absolutely. Love yeah. that. Yep. Um, and then a little fun fact about myself too. I have a pet ferret. His name is Chomper. I don't know if anyone's seen Land Before Time, but he was named after that. <laughs> and he's amazing, so. Awesome. Nice. All right. So um, before we get started, I figured we can just do some quick introductions. Um, hopefully we have the majority of the audience already joined now, so we can just jump right into things. Uh, so myself, Kristen Vaughn, um, I'm a director of online marketing at Co-Marketing, which is a B2B agency based out of Boston. Um, my specialties are SEO, content marketing, social media, um, and super excited to be your host today. And search um, engine journal contributor. Yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Danny. <laughs> yeah. um, Danny is the executive editor of, of Search Engine Journal, which I'm sure you're all aware. Um, he's an editor, a writer. Uh, he was a ghostwriter in the marketing space, and he has more than 10 years of experience. Um, Danny oversees the editorial st strategy for Search Engine Journal, and he's going to be sharing one particular strategy, which has been um, it has had a huge impact on the growth of the site um, and the publication um, over the over recent time. So excited about that! Mm -hmm. uh, Julia McCoy is the CEO at Express Writers, um, where she runs all the behind the scenes operations of the content creation agency. Uh, she's also an author of two books, and now it seems like another one coming up soon as well. Um, she hosts the Write Podcast. Uh, she's named an industry leader by Forbes as well, so that's awesome. Thanks. Um, also, I noticed that um, you had just recently started the Content Hacker community, which seems really great. So everyone check out that if you have a chance as well. Thanks. Jeremy Na. Also, we have here of the founder of Spartan Media, um, based out of Tampa. So we're all super jealous that he's in Tampa and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Digital marketing agency. He has um, nearly two decades of experience in the industry. So really bringing a lot to the table today. Um, he's an expert in web design, SEO, and social media, and contributes to several leading publications, including Search Engine Journal, Search Engine Land. Um, lots of good stuff there. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, so now that we know everyone, I figured we can just jump right into things here. So um, just kind of introducing the top topic a bit more. Um, today, we'll be talking about what to do with your old content on your website, um, which has been there's been a lot of kind of debate in the community recently, we figured we can just dive right into things specifically using search engine journal as a key example here. Um, so really like could old content be hindering your website performance um, and if you were to update it or remove it could that improve things um, so kind of the the debate that i'm referring to is that google has actually advised against doing this um, but the results clearly show otherwise um, so we're excited to jump right into that and um, danny's going to be kicking things off with the presentation here uh, then after the presentation, we've saved some time to go over your questions. So um, feel free to send those through in the chat as well. All right, shall I kick off? Sure. Okay, let me hold it up here. Okay, is that showing for everybody? Yep. yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so welcome everybody to the fabulous capital. At the Capitol, there is one over, overriding mission, aside from obviously making lots and lots of money for the Capitol, it's to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Now, how do they do this? Well, the Capitol is relying on millions and millions of creators to fuel it with content. That's how it makes all its money. But lately, over the last few years, eh, Capitol's gotten a lot greedier. Um, you know, they're, they're continuing to steal more and more real estate. You know, they're they're taking up space with ads, news, knowledge panels, local carousels, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, uh, they're giving less and less clicks to us all the time. Um, according to this latest uh, data from Jumpshot and SparkToro, 50% uh, of all searches now are no clicks. So um, basically everybody is fighting for a whole lot less. And of course, people have rebelled over the years, but uh, the capital has lashed out at them, um, you know, unleashing updates like pandas and penguins, hummingbirds, and of course, core algorithm updates most recently. Yet, you know, we continue to feed them because, you know, we need to survive and so do they. You know, but basically what it comes down to is, you know, we're all fighting for visitors and customers and uh, revenue um, and our content is starving. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's getting kind of brutal out there. But um, you know, there there is hope because there is one district out there that was struggling, but now it's thriving, and we call it District SEJ for Search Engine Journal. Uh, District SEJ is defying the almighty capital, despite all this bad stuff. In fact, we've been growing a lot. Uh, you know, we're at two million. Uh, pages a month now. We're actually over 80,000 on our email subs uh, email newsletter subscriptions, uh, or a million uh, sessions a month, 870,000 visitors. And this is all growth, growth, growth. So how are we doing it? Well, oh, and of course, there's another good, there's more good news. It's not just that. We're also seeing record revenue. We're not quite making Jennifer Lawrence money, but, you know, we're doing pretty well uh, for, <laughs> for, for ourselves. Um, and how have we done this? Well, we're turning our weak content into warrior content. Um, and this is this is the numbers that tell the story. So, you know, if we look back to July of 2015, which is two years before I started, um, you know, we're like, sorry, I can't read that number, about 900 some odd thousand pages a month. And the month before I started as executive editor, we were down to 890,000. Um, and as you can see, starting in July of 2017, we started to reverse that finally. Um, you know, started at 910,000. Now we've doubled that, more than doubled that, to over 2 million pages a month. So it's kind of crazy, right? Pages are up 71 plus percent year over year. Organic traffic's up 74 plus percent year over year. So did somebody say SEO is dead? Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but no. Uh, you know, we're seeing 71 percent of our traffic coming in from organic, uh, you know, organic search. So it can be done. So how are we doing it? Well. I'd like to welcome you all to the Content Hunger Games. Um, I'm going to today to teach you how we've uh, stopped becoming a victim of the capital and how you too can become a victor. Because we're going to be talking about why and how to improve your content or remove it. And this is me. You can learn about me more later, but we already covered this, so we'll move on. 
So let's just dive right in. So why should you improve your old content? Uh, of course, we know content is king or queen, which is why we had that picture. Um, but this is this is the big one. So Google, our, our capital, as you may have figured out, they know about 130 trillion individual pages. Now, this is as of 2016, so we know this number is way higher now. But only hundreds of uh, hundreds of billions of pages are actually indexed. So this sort of signal to us, well, maybe Google doesn't want all your content anymore. Maybe they only want your best content. And we sort of thought that was the trend where Google's heading, and I think we're pretty spot on there. Um, so this became our mission, and maybe it should become your mission too. So you want to give Google only your best content. You want to make it optimized, useful, and relevant. That should be your mission. You know what Google's mission is, but this is your mission now. And we, we're going to talk a lot about content quality, but one thing before we get into that I want to talk about was content inequality. So when I started for a Search Engine Journal, we ran the numbers and we found out that the top 3% of our posts were driving as much traffic as the bottom 97% combined, which is kind of ridiculous. You know, you always hear like, you know, the 20-80 rule where 20% drives 80% of your results. We weren't even getting that. So I look at that, that black spot there is just a giant black hole of wasted opportunity. So if you can make more out of that little sliver, you could be driving so much more good things for your website, more traffic, more revenue, all the stuff that, that matters. So why would you want to remove your old content? Well, in a word, it's quality. Um, so basically, this is what, what you're looking at here is something Google published a few years ago. It's no longer live, but I put the link in there so you can find it. Uh, essentially, Google has defined what quality content is to them. So it, the key things here are useful and informative, more valuable and useful than other websites. It's credible, it's high quality, and it's engaging. And notice that they were use the word useful twice. So always think about creating useful content above all else. And you are, of course, also what you eat, or EAT. Uh, we've all heard a lot about EAT lately, which, of course, is expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, which is in the Google uh, Raider guidelines. So what is EAT? Uh, it's not, don't think of it as ranking factors. Think of it as standards for your website. Um, you know, expertise is basically your unique skills, information, or knowledge. Your authority is that people know about that stuff and they recognize your skills or knowledge. And trust is people actually believe in you know, what you think, say, or do, and they feel secure buying from you or endorsing you. This is hard stuff. This, is, this isn't simplified. This is the really hard stuff. It takes a lot of hard work to, to grow all this stuff. So, um, yeah. Now, when we talk about removing versus improving, what has Google said on that? As Kristen indicated in the intro, there's been some debate about that. Uh, typically, Google has erred on the side of don't remove stuff, uh, especially lately. Uh, Gary Yesh and John Mueller have both said it. Uh, they recommend against removing content. They say you should improve and add more high quality stuff, as I say, as I show here in some of these tweets. You know, make your thin content thicker. Um, never remove anything that someone could find useful. All right, fair enough. And he's also said that um, in terms of removing content, you won't see any positive effect from that. Okay, we'll revisit that in a minute. Um, but his, his main point here is that, um, you know, if you're not indexed, it's not gonna hurt you, which I don't necessarily agree with based on what I know now. Um, and John Mueller has also weighed in, of course, basically saying that, um, uh, you know, if you improve your stuff, theoretically your rankings would improve, whereas if you remove stuff, it will hurt your rankings. But of course, if you're ranking and you're not getting any traffic, does it really matter? No. Uh, so, th but then if you go back to 2011, uh, there's this old post that I sort of rediscovered uh, that I wrote, uh, and Google came out with this tip after the Google Panda update launched. It was to remove your low quality content. And why do they tell us to do this? Well, it turns out that Google said uh, that low quality content on part of your site can impact your site's ranking as a whole. Interesting. They also said that removing low quality pages or moving them to a different domain could help your rankings for the higher quality content. Also interesting. And it also contradicts everything John and Gary have been saying. So, which is right? Well, we decide to find out. So, we uh, started 
doing this. We started doing some improvement and removing. Um, so let's first talk about how to make your old content catch fire. And to do that, we have to first talk about the content creation process. Uh, it's basically five steps. Uh, as most of you watching probably know this stuff, but um, if not, let's just do this really quickly. It's five steps. You get to research, and then you got to create your content, then you got to promote it, then you got to measure it, and then the final step is improve it or remove it. And then it all depends on how things went with you. And always remember, the odds are never in your favor when you create content. Okay, Google owes you nothing unless you're paying for unless you're paying for it. You know. Uh, so don't expect anything. Now, the thing with this process is most people, you know, most everyone I talk to is really great with the research phase. They're great with creating the content, but then the drop off happens. You know, a lot of people just publish stuff. They don't promote it. Even less people actually measure. And then very, very few people are doing the improve or remove stage. So it's, it's just a, it's an opportunity there that you guys should take advantage of. And for us, uh, when we started, uh, the research phase meant we needed to know what we had on our site. Uh, we had about 18,000 pages to deal with, so we needed to know what we had. Uh, so we you know, fired up our favorite crawler and uh, started our content audit. Out of that, this is what we wanted to know. Uh, these are the key things you want to figure out uh, for what you have on your website. You, know, you want to know what your title is. Is it optimized? Does it sort of have a reader benefit in there? Uh, is your URL SEO friendly, or do you have to change it? Who wrote your content? Uh, is it an expert or authority? Is it just some rando person you pay it a, off of Fiverr? Um, when did you publish it? Is the information out of date? Um, does it need to be updated? You want to know your number of reads because obviously more is better as that indicates you had really good content that connected with people and lower amount indicates that you had some bad content. Word count uh, is one of those tricky things. It might indicate quality issues, but not necessarily. So. It, it's not live or die, but look at it. Uh, it can indicate issues. You also definitely want to know your number of links, both inbound and internal. Uh, and we also did a look at trust flow and citation flow, which is uh, Majestic uh, scores for uh, link, link equity, basically, and quality score. So uh, I think our minimum threshold was about 25. And this is how I personally define quality content. Um, you know, all the, your content doesn't have to be all of these things, but the more of these things that you can check off, the better. Uh, you know, accuracy, being original, make sure, making sure it's formatted and readable, uh, friendly for mobile, that it's shareable easily, uh, you know, visually interesting, should be answering questions, solving problems, be entertaining, uh, and always be informative, inspiring, or educational. So the more that you can check off of, off of this list, uh, the better chance that you have that your content will be successful. So that's still a little fuzzy. So how do we actually measure all that? Um, these are the, the five things we looked at. We looked at page views. Uh, we looked at organic traffic. We looked at our number of links. Uh, we looked at our conversions. And conversions, of course, will vary depending on what matters to your website. Um, it could be you know, how many people are subscribing, how many people are downloading stuff, um, what, signing up for demos, whatever the case may be. Uh, you want to make sure that your content is converting whatever that uh, you define that as. And you can also look at engagement, and that could be stuff like time on page or bounce rate, for example. And ultimately, it comes down to your best judgment. Um, you know, there may be cases where content that you thought should have done well didn't. Uh, there is a lot of variables out there. It could be time of day, it could be time of year, it could be anything. Um, so, but the key thing to remember is don't just keep going after something if it fails. You know, a couple times, that's a sign that your audience just doesn't care about it. So yeah, you know, don't don't waste your effort on a loser. Now, when should we set our old content on fire and just destroy it? Well, Google's also offered a little bit of advice here on uh, what is low quality content. So we talked about EAT. So if you have an inadequate amount of EAT, that could be a sign of low quality content. Uh, your main content quality is low, unsatisfying amount of main content. Uh, maybe you're using clickbaity sort of tactics like exaggerated or shocking titles. Uh, or you, your ads or your supporting content may be distracting from your main content, uh, or you may have just an unsatisfying amount of information about the website or content creator, or even negative reputation. So this is all stuff you want to look at. Again, this is from the Raider guidelines. It's not ranking stuff. It's just sort of standards. Think about having standards. You don't want this. 
ultimately, uh, you know, low quality content is doomed. Okay, if you don't have a target audience, if you don't have a goal or a purpose for the content you're creating, if you're not optimizing it, I'm sure most of the people watching this are optimizing it, but uh, there's still so many who don't do enough. Uh, if you don't have these three things, you're gonna be unsuccessful. Um, we're past the, the time where we're just creating content for the sake of it. You need to have a purpose and an audience and just optimize the heck out of it every time. All right, so with that, let the Hunger Games begin. So what are we doing here? So the rules for our content Hunger Games are, are basically this. We have to evaluate every piece of content and decide what to do with it. So it may be the case that there are no changes needed. Maybe it needs an update. Maybe it needs a rewrite. Maybe we need to combine a bunch of uh, posts into one, or maybe we just need to delete it. So how do we decide? So let's walk through this. So this is how we did it. And I've sort of bucketed um, the criteria for this into we'll call them personas or tributes in this case. Um, so our first tribute, uh, this is what the sort of content looks like. So all, all your information is accurate or it has historic value. Uh, it has good traffic or engagement. It's attracted lots of quality links and shares. It's probably ranking in position one to three right now, and it's generating conversions. So all sounds good, right? Indeed, you found a content mocking J. So no changes are needed. Don't screw up a good thing. Um, you're more likely if you mess around with stuff that's doing well to you know cause problems. So sometimes it's smarter to just let it be unless it actually really needs an update. So we'll move on to our next tribute from District 4. Oh, poor District 4. Um, so this sort of content, it may still be getting consistent traffic or maybe it used to get a lot. Uh, over the years, it's earned some valuable links and shares. Still ranking on page one of Google. Uh, but the problem is with these next two bullet points. You're not getting a lot of conversions anymore or you're getting poor uh, engagement. So what do we do here? Well, it's time for to update or refresh the post. Um, you have to make all the information accurate. Um, we need to make it better than your competitors. And you ideally want to keep it on the same URL if possible, especially if you've built up any equity over the years there. Um, so if that's possible, keep it there. If not, uh, we can move it and we'll talk about that in a minute. Here's an actual example of a content update that we've done on Search Engine Journal. So we originally had this post uh, written in 2016. Uh, got 22,000 reads, it was ranking one or two pretty much all the time. It's getting about 2,000 pages a month, and I built up some pretty good uh, link equity. So everything was good, but, you know, the problem comes, you know, 2017. Oh, who's going to be looking for, you know, 2017 calendar in 2018? So obviously that's an opportunity to refresh. So that's what we did. And obviously you can see uh, we did that. And here's what that looked like. So, yeah. Basically, we went from about 2,000 a month, uh, refreshed it, two times improvement. We're now we're getting basically about 5,000 or so uh, page views per month on that on that post just from updating it. Danny, one question um, sure. that we got in the chat, which I feel yeah. like kind of applies here too. When you're thinking about refreshing articles, sure. um, do you usually recommend updating the publishing date in WordPress or whatever CMS is being used? Um, typically, yes. Um, what we, we typically do would be to, you know, refresh it and then change the, the um, actual publication date. I know that some people will also put a note either at the top or bottom saying this post was updated on, but I prefer to change the actual publication date. Um, the key has to be that it's a substantial change. Like in this case, it's substantial where you're going from a year to a year. So it's a totally different post. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say change, change the date. Yeah, Absolutely. I think also just making sure that you're refreshing the content too in a way that's not like deceptive. So if you change the date, yes. make sure like your stats are of that date, um, any like yeah. facts mentioned or up to date, that type of thing. That's usually what I would recommend too. Um, exactly. Jeremy or Julia, any, any other practices you have there? No, but I did want to throw a question out there. Did you guys have um, schema set up with the dates in there as well or no? Um, I would have to check on that. I believe we do, yes. Cool, cool. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, just figured that oh. question kind of applied there. Okay. Thank yep. you. Sure. All right, so we'll move on to our next tribute from poor District 5. Oh boy, okay. So this is sort of content, uh, you, you'll recognize it because it's getting little or no traffic. It's not getting any links or shares anymore. It's not ranking on page one anymore. Maybe it's not even indexed. Um, you may be surprised. Uh, sometimes content just falls out of Google, so make sure you check that. 
and it's definitely not getting any conversions. So what do we do here? Well, it's time to rewrite it. Uh, you may have written something that was once useful, but uh, maybe it's just not anymore. You know, so make it more useful, make it more relevant, make it more helpful. Um, you know, start from scratch, update all the information, make it accurate. Uh, for us, we tip when we do a rewrite, we typically three or one redirect the old to the new post, especially if it's been like it feels like it's just lost all its value. Um, and we'll talk about why, um, because Google has talked to us about this, how they pass page, uh, page rank through 301s. Very short, um, you know, Google can afford page rank, but they don't always pass 100% of page rank. The key to get the most out of that is to do a 301 redirect from pages that closely match. So you want to go from the same topic to same topic. You don't want to just do some random thing or redirect to the home page, which is a mistake a lot of people make. Uh, you want to only do 301 redirects when it's from page to page and the topics are the same. And here's our example of that. We had this old post that was originally written in 2008. Uh, it had gotten 50,000 reads over the years, but it was no longer ranking, only getting 50 page views a month, which is uh, pretty terrible. And uh, But it had some really good link equity. So uh, we had Jenny Hallis uh, rewrite it, and the results were just amazing on this one. You know, went from uh, basically over like 4,000 page views uh, a month, you know, from 50. So that's like 80 times improvement. This is one of our biggest successes, and it's still doing really well for us. So. Um, it's a real, again, it's, a, it's just a simple missed opportunity to do this stuff. One other quick question there too. Um, sure. Someone had a question around, is it okay to redirect an old blog post to a category page um, uh, if they want the category page to rank? You can do that. Um, I mean, you're, you're probably not gonna get the full page, you know, put the full equity out of that, but you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it personally. I don't know, Jeremy, would you agree? You know, I, I think it depends maybe on what that individual blog post was, but in general, I would agree with you. Yeah, okay. Cool, all right. So we'll move on to our uh, next district, district number five. Um, so this is a case where you'll notice that you have multiple articles that are all on one topic. Uh, maybe one piece is getting some traffic and the others are getting little or none. Uh, this may sound like keyword cannibalization. Um, you may have heard that term, that's sort of what this is. Uh, you're also not attracting any new links or shares. You're not ranking on page one. Or the other thing you may see is that you have the wrong page ranking, like the one you want is not, and some wrong pages ranking. Or you may even have the case where you have two, uh, two pages competing with each other, and that usually happens because Google can't figure out which page to rank. So they're basically split testing it for you. Um, so in this case, it's time to consolidate all that content. Um, you want to create one awesome piece of content. You know, start from scratch, reuse anything you can from those, you know, however many pieces you have. If there's anything you can save, save it. But um, yeah, you want to start from scratch. Just make it better than your competitor again. Don't get into the whole, oh, we need to do skyscraper 10 times content. Just make it better than your competitor. Um, and then you want to 301 redirect all the posts, the new posts. Uh, to your new, brand new and awesome post. And um, we also had John Mueller talk about combining content and he's actually said that that's a cool thing to do. Um, because, you know, if you, he says here, if you have three or four weak pages and you, you know, redirect them all to one stronger piece, that's a good sign of relevancy and it should help you. So do it. Uh, we actually had this. Uh, this is a kind of an ironic example for content audit. Um, we had multiple articles, six competing with each other. Um, yeah, it's kind of terrible. So we had six posts that are all written between 2012 and 2017, uh, combined for about 2,000 reads, which is you know pretty bad for us. None of them are on page one, only getting combined 20 pages a month. Uh, together, they had some link equity, but not a lot. So we had Ashley Ward rewrite it for us, and this awesome uh, piece did really well for us. Um, and yeah, so we went from like 10 a day to, or 10 or 20 a day to 100 or 200 a day. And the bonus part was we got on page one of Google. So uh, 10 times improvement there. And then, all right, we're going to talk about the final district here, district number nine. This is our thin content. So for me, thin content is stuff that is poorly written, maybe off topic, maybe it's syndicated, uh, or in some terrible cases, it may be stolen or plagiarized. This is the stuff you don't want on your website. This stuff will hurt you. Uh, 
you also can recognize the stuff because it has absolutely no historical significance. Um, there's very few page views and very few traffic, um, you know, links, shares, conversions, or engagement. All of it's just terrible. And here's, uh, again, a, a sad example from SEJ's past, uh, what the ants taught me about successful internet marketing. And we've put this poor girl in witness relocation because uh, <laughs> she, yeah, we won't, we won't say who she was, but this is just terrible content because if you're trying to learn stuff about marketing from ants, you're uh, in rough shape. Okay. So yeah, we're just gonna kill this with fire. Um, Oops, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so then we just got to de decide, do we want to delete this stuff or de-index it? So we'll talk about that in a second. If you do decide to get stuff out of the search engines, you have two options here. So the question is always, do you want to do a 404 or a 410? Uh, short answer, if you want stuff to come out really fast, uh, 410. Uh, if not, if you want it to just sort of slowly die out of the index, leave it as a 404, it'll Google will eventually drop it when they figure out it's gone. But I would suggest doing the 410 if you really want it gone. If like if it's something that you're sort of embarrassed about, like maybe ants doing <laughs> what you can learn from ants, uh, you want that out as soon as possible. Uh, and I have a, it's really simple. I know I know Google advises against removing content, but you know at this point we've de-indexed over a thousand posts and we've deleted another five thousand. Uh, and this this is as simple as I can make it. Is this flow chart? Is it dangerous to remove content? If it's getting any traffic, if it has link equity, if it's ranking on page one, or if anybody might miss it if it's gone, then yeah, it, it's probably a little dangerous to remove the content, but if you answer no to this, and odds are with the low quality content, you will answer no, then no. I, I see no reason not to uh, remove your bad content, especially if you don't want people seeing it. So, so let's sum up, so why do you want to join this content uh, marketing Hunger Games revolution? Why do you want to improve and remove your content? So the proof is in the numbers for us. Uh, so far this year, seven of our top 10 pages with the most page views are rewrites. Stuff that we've refreshed or rewritten completely. Um, and as I've mentioned, I've shown you examples today, we've seen increases of at least two times, we've seen five times, 10 times, we even had that 80 times example. All this stuff, you know, if you add up all this stuff over time, it just adds up and adds up. And that's why we saw that up and to the right, that's that's how it works. You know, every every everything you can do to increase traffic just helps you. And uh, one other note I just want to add on is sort of a bonus that featured snippets uh, can also be passed from old to new content. We found this out because we did a little experiment uh, with this old post. Um, it was originally written in 2014. Um, it was ranking position one, page one, so it was doing well. It was still getting 800 pages a month, and it had some good link equity, but uh, this is sort of the, one of those areas where you look at it and go, oh, this isn't as good as it could be. Um, where you just use your judgment, and we had it rewritten. So we had uh, Ryan Jones rewrite it for us, uh, did this really great job. And uh, so this is the before and after for the featured snippets. So uh, the day after we published the new post, we did a 301, 301 redirect from the old post to the new post. And uh, within 24 hours, Google already picked it up. So the key here is just to make sure that, you know, and then again, featured snippets is a whole topic unto itself for formatting, but just, you know, look into, you know, think about how you're formatting your content, make sure it's, uh, friendly if you already have a featured snippet to make sure you keep a similar sort of structure. And yeah, as you leave here today, um, your mission is just to make all your old content catch fire. Um, you need a strategy, you need to optimize everything, you need to measure and improve always. And always think about being useful and relevant. Uh, these are all important. So improve your content whenever you can through rewrites, combination, or updating. And if you can't improve it, then de-index it or delete it from your website. Uh, it will help you, I believe. And may the SEO odds be ever in your favor. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Danny. Um, so we had a couple questions in here in the chat. Um, so one of the questions specifically was around um, titles and URL changes. So um, yep. is it okay to change the title topic of an article and then 301 redirect it to um, a new URL? I think, I think I'm interpreting that correctly. <laughs> 
Uh, as long as it's on the same topic, you can change your titles to whatever mm -hmm. you want. Uh, I would just make sure that the content is this, you know, it's on the same topic. Like obviously if the, 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 the title or the H1 or the headline didn't work before, if, you know, maybe it had a bad click through rate or whatever the case may be, then you would definitely want to change it anyway. Um, but yeah, the key thing with the redirecting from an, from an old URL to new one is just to make sure that the content is very similar. It has to just be on the same topic. That's the key. The headline isn't as important as the actual content. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, we have a couple other ones here too. So um, one specifically from Charlotte, if you have one article that works better, but a lot of other articles on that topic, should we redirect the weaker ones to the better content? Um, so I think that kind of goes back to your points around like consolidating content. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess just, is it okay to redirect more than one um, to a better piece of content? Maybe you don't even have to refresh it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can. Uh, we have done that. And, and mm -hmm. that example I shared was, you know, we, we did redirect six posts to one new post. So it can be done. Yeah. Uh, just a question, you know, it's it's always, it, it's tough to just do a blanket statement. I hate that, you know, it depends. But you got to think about, too, are those, you know, if one of those pages maybe has a crazy high conversion rate or is just doing something that's driving business for you, you got to be careful. You got to look at all the metrics first but it can be done absolutely but yeah. it's, it's just a case you know it's always it goes back to your judgment you have to just be you know, looking at everything yeah and i think like if if that one piece of content is truly better maybe that makes sense but i would also look through those other assets and see like is there something else that i could add here um sure. to offer even more value to that content that's performing well already yep. um, and it could be the case too oh sorry it could be the case too that like there could be a long tail term yeah. that you get better target so it's mm -hmm. not you know so it's not like you're trying to all get on to one certain term but you you know mm -hmm. it's almost like you could think about it as supporting content mm -hmm. where it's on a similar topic but you're helping to support that bigger piece that you want uh, to rank well yeah um yeah i was just gonna say jeremy julia any other thoughts on that like redirecting multiple posts to one asset yeah, I, you know, I think you have to look at what the what the mindset of the visitor is when they're going to those pages because if they if they have a particular mindset that doesn't fit with where you want to redirect them to, and they end up bouncing out of there because of that, that could screw things up for you as well. And just to back up what Danny was saying about keyword cannibalization, I think he brought that up a few slides ago. That's mm -hmm. something we did in the first, I want to say, five years of creating content without even knowing it. We created content that competed with each other, just like your content audit keyword was showing. Right. So we had all these competing, competing keywords on the first page of Google for bringing in our target audience, so none of them are ranking. So pointing them to one substantial piece of content that answers that useful checkbox, which was repeated three times, two or three times in Google's guidelines. That's interesting. So if it checks that useful box, then redirecting all the other pieces to that one amazing piece of content will give you so much more chances of success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something cool too that you can take from this exercise. Like as you're looking through this and auditing your content, figure out like what are your underperforming posts? What are your top performing posts? And kind of apply that to your editorial calendar moving forward. Um, so that way you don't have to keep, you, you probably will have to do it again eventually, but. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. But you don't have to do it as as much of an overhaul, maybe. Maybe you just cont continuously see um, those posts growing. So like mm -hmm. when it comes to your editorial calendar, keep keyword cannibalization in mind. Um, I've mm -hmm. often run into this challenge with clients too, where um, like say they have marketing automation as their big focus, just as an example, and they mm -hmm. want to create every piece of content about marketing automation. Yep. That's fine to have marketing automation as the term you want to rank for, but make sure that each asset is offering something unique and maybe targeting a longer tail variation of that, maybe marketing automation challenges, marketing automation um, platform options, whatever that might be. Um, but yeah, use this as an opportunity, this exercise to um, plan better too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a good keyword research tool will help you find so many variations, like what Kristen was saying, you can come up with gosh, we see 10 or 12 variations for one STEM keyword now. Like if it's blogging, we can find how to write a blog. How long should a blog be? What blogging topics should I write on? And those are like six word phrases that have so little competition in Google. 
Mm -hmm. So use a yeah. good keyword research tool. SEMrush is definitely a good one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, okay, so I'll throw this question over to Jeremy. We actually, going back to URL changes, um, this one's kind of specific. I like this example, but if you change the date on an updated post, say it's um, more of like a best strategies for 2016 um, to best strategies for 2018, do you think it's worth changing the URL to reflect the current year? I like you know, that because it's All right, good. so <laughs> this is, this is a, an example where there's not really a, a, a perfect situation. Um, generally, I hate changing URLs. But in a case like that, it's kind of necessary. What you should do is not have the date in the URL to begin with. Yep. So mm -hmm. change it, you know, tear the Band-Aid off, and then not have to worry about it in the future. Yeah. And one and thing I'll just add to that, um, we actually did a little bit of research internally on our posts that had uh, years in the, in the URLs. And we saw, like, so basically our organic traffic had this weird pattern for a couple of years before I started where it would just grow and then go down, grow and then go down, grow and then go down. So what was happening? Turned out that all the posts that had the year in the title were declining at the end of the year. Cause it was like, oh, hmm, well it's the end of the year. So this isn't relevant anymore. So Google would just drop it. So I think it's better to have like an evergreen URL. Um, and that's one of the reasons where, where I talk about having an optimized URL, having a year or anything with a time reference in the, in the URL is bad, I think, because it, it really dates it. So if someone's searching in 2019 and you have this great post that maybe is still relevant, but it has 2017 in the URL, I don't think Google's going to show it. So I I've heard. Keep, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say to add to that, um, I've heard Brian Zine at Backlinko, I don't know if you've heard this, Danny or Jeremy, um, say that the less words, the better in your URL. So three yeah. or less is what he recommends, which three is not very many words. So sometimes that's <laughs> yeah, hard. Sure. Mm -hmm. But have you heard that? What do you think about that? I yeah. haven't heard that, but... Uh, that sort of makes sense. I don't think it should be a word count. It just should be, hmm. you know, you want to indicate to Google like the keyword or the topic, you know, right. however, right. however many words that takes. I, I haven't heard a specific number, but I there was somebody, and I'm drawing a blank as to who it was, somebody from Google was saying specifically that shorter URLs are better. Mm -hmm. um, so take yep. that for what it's worth. Cool. Nice. Um, okay, so one question, is around um, applying this to main site pages instead of blog posts. So does this strategy apply to main site pages? Um, has anyone here tried it? Say like a product and services page. Um, and what, what would you all recommend for that? I mean, it definitely applies there just as much as with blog posts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know this is something that Danny actually you wrote an article about this topic as well. Um, so I think, I mean, think about it in the same way, have the same mission for your main site landing pages, provide, focus on quality, right? Um, yep. So if there's opportunities to make your landing pages more up to date, and I'm sure there will be naturally anyways, just as your product and services evolve, mm -hmm. um, so. Yep. And it's interesting what ranks in the top of Google. Like for us, it's a mix between landing pages, blogs, and long form product description pages. We've actually had rank with a buy now link, which Google has also said shouldn't really be ranking. <laughs> That's ranked <laughs> in the top three of Google. There's a buy now button at the bottom, but it was a long form product description. Hmm. So definitely test and assess and measure the last three steps of the creation process that Danny shared were really good for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so another question we have here, uh, how do you decide what needs to go and what should be improved? Um, so I know we talked about this a little bit already, but kind of just diving into the, the specifics a bit more. Uh, so I'll throw, go ahead, Danny. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll throw an example out there. So in certain industries, you're going to have things that are kind of like newsworthy, maybe legal changes or, you know, things like that, um, building codes, stuff like that. So obviously those things are no longer relevant. That would be a perfect example of something you get rid of. But, you know, we talked about combining and we talked about the dates. So that might be a case where you can take it and do like an archive, like here's what's happened throughout history, but then you've got mm -hmm. the, the more current one as your main page, right? So that's one approach there. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I mean, one of our challenges was with some of our older news content. Um, you know, it was sort of the case where a lot of the stuff we, that search engine journal covered back in the day, maybe it wasn't as relevant to SEO or PPC. Like it could have been some other Google announcement that wasn't super relevant. 
Um, so it's just a case of, you, know, you just sort of got to look at the topic. Does, is this part of my keyword universe? Like, does it fit in anymore? And if it doesn't, just kick it out. That, that's just yeah. one simple example. Um, do you guys have like a, uh, I guess, credential for how long you would give an asset time from a time frame perspective to pick up traffic? Say, like, would you not touch a piece of content for like six months until you revisit it for optimizations? Or um, do you all have a, like a credential for that? Uh, for me, it depends on what that term or what that topic's role is in the business, right? There may be some mm -hmm. where it ranks for it, it gets no traffic, but it's something that people... Uh, their customers might have a need to have that question answered. So even if it's only a few visits a month, we still leave it there. In mm -hmm. other cases, it might be something where it's not important, it doesn't matter. And if there's not traffic, then we kill it or, or improve it. Mm -hmm. uh, typically my rule is uh, two, if after two years, it hasn't done much for us, um, you know, it's time to update it or get rid mm -hmm. of it. Um, but yeah, as a general rule. Our benchmark is 12 month mark. So that's when we start reviewing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's helpful when people are thinking about like exporting data in Google Analytics. Like maybe um, you figure out what's best for your specific business and, and maybe even don't start within the next, the past six months, 12 months, yep. two years even. Don't even look at that new content to kind of help you take a more narrow approach to it. Mm hmm. Cool. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. So we had a lot around publishing dates. Hopefully we addressed that for everyone. We had a lot around URL changes. Um, so what, what do I look at for in, a, in the content itself to update and improve when I'm rewriting? Um, that was one question we had, but I think we also had another one specifically around Google answer box targeting. Um, and I feel like these two, um, might be one to consider. So like when you're thinking about um, what to rewrite in a, any piece of content, I would highly recommend really just getting in search results um, and taking a look at what's already ranking out there. And really that type of analysis is going to help guide your updates. So unfortunately, there's not we can't just give you a list of updates to make to your content. It's really going to be unique and targeted towards the keyword um, and the topic at hand. Um, so I guess, do you, do you guys have any uh, general considerations there um, as far as like things that usually need to be updated besides dates? I mean, when you're, you're looking at updating, you want to just get subject matter experts. I think that's the biggest thing because they will know what should be there. So it may not be the case you have to have them write the content, but maybe if you can have someone review it for you, it, like if you don't know it as well. Uh, I think that's a huge thing. Um, and just people, like you want writers, like you want good writers. So th that involves paying for them. So you I get to find like- everything Danny said. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just need to, you know, you can't, like I made the joke about Fiverr, you can't mm -hmm. just like make, you know, cheap content. If yeah. you, you know, you get to like find a really good agency and someone who knows what they're doing. And that that's the best way to do it. That's you know, where I, that phrase you get what you pay for comes from. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. This whole time. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> yeah. And for right. us, like it comes down to the quality. You know, we see our posts go back up in the rankings. Like we'll see it go down, lose that ranking when we're updating it and go right back up to like position three or four or sometimes two after the quality has been improved. So that's what we focus on. That's everything in our focus and quality is several things. It's are the statistics accurate? Are, is the research current to date? Are you pulling in screenshots of tools that look like that today versus what they look like three years ago? <laughs> so quality, that's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Um, one other thing. Oh, sorry, Jeremy, were you just going to add something there? Uh, well, I just say, you know, you obviously, you've, in addition of all that, you've got, you know, statistics and, and data and stuff like that, that obviously you want to take a look at, make sure that's up to date, any kind of images or media, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and throwing schema in there as well can be helpful. Yeah. Um, so this was, uh, I think we briefly mentioned this as well, but uh, we have, you mentioned that we should get rid of syndicated content. Is that a hard and fast rule or are there expectations? I like that one. Personally, I, I I don't think beyond the first publication that it helps you at all. 
So why why keep it? You know, like it may drive a few. I mean, if if you're page driven website, okay, it's fine to do it. But what's the long term value there? It's just going to sit on your website, and no one's ever going to find it, most likely. So uh, that's just what I found. All of our syndicated stuff. Um, if, if you did a search for it, the person who originally wrote it ranked. We didn't. So again, we're not getting a long term value out of it. I, I just prefer mm-hmm. to think in terms of long term value. Um, mm-hmm. If short term value matters, that's fine to do it, but I just wouldn't keep it on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, you want to be the expert. So if you're relying on other people to come in. Yeah. Know, the only time I've seen that to have, um, I guess, somewhat of a positive impact is like if you're dealing with two sites that are owned by the same company or same uh, whatever, and you're kind of using them to cross promote with one another, that might be a case where syndicating is helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, But really, I mean, you're syndicating your own content still. So it's always better to have it in one place. (laughs) What I'll do, and this has driven some pretty good traffic to our site, I'll after we publish the main article on our site, which is our house, you know, that's our best real estate. I'll take like the hook and the first three points and put that in a new LinkedIn article. <clears throat> and that will drive traffic from LinkedIn because my mm-hmm. profile has like 3,500 followers. That'll drive tra- traffic from that social media platform to that article. So that's like a better way to mm-hmm. syndicate you social yeah. media articles yeah. and publish yeah. those. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, So here's another good question. So from Melissa, we have for content, I've always heard that pushing more will drive more traffic. For blogs, would you say it's better to update old content at a decrease of new content? So um, thinking about like, when you go through this audit, and you see um, that, oh, that 80% of your content isn't really offering much value, should should you apply maybe publishing less in the future? Or should you keep the same um, frequency? So for us, uh, we did a mix, obviously, because we, well, I think we publish on average five, six posts a day. So we're still pumping out new stuff with Mm -hmm. the old stuff. Um, So I would advise doing it that way, Mm -hmm. um, personally, because that's worked for us. Because you always want the, yeah, 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 as long as you have the resources. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you stop publishing, you're going to give people the expectation that there's not new content there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that kind of just goes back to use the findings to just make that content better too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if it's just maybe a case where you update one or two posts a week or, you know, whatever, it depends obviously on resources, but if you can update one one a week, one a month, whatever the case may be, um, you know, there there are rewards to be had there. Yeah. It's much better than nothing. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, So one of the questions that came in, I think we have time for a few more here. Can you speak a bit more about de-indexing content that you will eventually want to update during the process? I guess, should you do that? Should you de-index content first? And then um, if so, best practice. So (laughs) short answer is no. Um, The stuff that we de-index is stuff that is just we don't want to use again. It's just (laughs) crap, crap content. So we're just getting rid of it. if there's anything that you eventually want to rewrite, don't de-index it. Just keep it there for now, and then just update it. Like, just leave it on the site because it won't it won't harm you, you know, as, if it's just there. But uh, yeah, because you don't want to kick your stuff out of out of the index, for sure. Yeah, I think that if anything, that would probably just confuse search engines a bit. If you're de-indexing, de-indexing yeah. updating, you would probably lose value in the in the midst yeah. of all of that. Yeah. Um, okay, so one in here too. How about press releases? How does this reply to press releases? I don't see any value in that. <laughs> no. I have a site on my a blog on my site called Press Releases Are Dead. We tied it to Halloween <laughs> and we literally did like a witch on a broom. Press releases are dead. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, for SEO, so, they are. I guess yeah. when you guys uh, deal with press releases, do you normally um, after a certain amount of time, clean those up from your site, maybe to make it a little less bulky or just leave them there. I, We've never published one yeah. on our site. Yeah. <laughs> we don't either. Yeah. yeah. I think I have done, I mean, obviously there's not a ton of SEO value there. Um, I yeah. guess just think about any links that you're getting to that press release. Um, if it's still driving traffic, if it's not driving traffic, I think you could probably just remove it. I mean, when you think of a press release, it's for the press. Honestly, yeah. I don't. I don't think of it as a thing that's an SEO asset. Personally, yeah. So, 
even from it's a press perspective, I don't think. That. What's that? I was just going to say, it's weird that it was once painted as an SEO benefit. Yeah. Right. He's right. It's for the news. Even yeah. from a PR perspective, <laughs> it's pretty much dead nowadays, though. Yeah. Wow. All right. Um, well, I think we covered the majority of questions here. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that answered everything for everyone. Thank you so much, Danny, for the presentation, uh, and Julia and Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Oh, awesome. and thank you to SEM Rush. Oh, yeah. Rush love is you guys. Your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get enough credit for wearing that, Danny. I know. <laughs> we need to see your face, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and feel free to reach out to us um, on social media as well if any other questions come up from this. I'm sure that we're all happy to answer. Absolutely. I'm always on Twitter. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.